again. So just finished painting in a lot of red models, an awful lot of red models. So I've just picked up something old and thought I might do some experimenting. So what I've got here are some orc, orc knobs and I'm just putting rusty armour all over them. So this is the sort of effect I'm going for. I don't know if that's showing up. Um, sort of like everything's dark rust with a couple of metallic bits shining through. And the way I've done that is I've got um, I've got a model I started earlier. This one. So this is just another one of those orc knobs and the undercoat or the primer is the colour on this base. And I went over all the metal bits. Well, you can see metal now in a black contrast. And after that, I've done the, um, the armor in a metallic base. So I've used um, lead belcher for that one. And Doesn't have to be very neat or anything, just try to cover it all. And what I do after that, which I've done here, is I put on this contrast paint. Garagax Sewer, it's called, which is a dark brown. And you can see, hopefully, what the contrast does. So it goes from a solid metallic to let's see what shows up. You can see it's sort of it's almost like it's bronze, but it's very dark metal. So it's still got a slight metallic sheen on certain parts. And then after that to get to this finished product I um, paint on a series of browns through to almost an orange and I do a few edges with little bits of silver like you can see the edge of this blade and that's supposed to represent where the metal is not rusted because it's bare because it's been banging into things um, and then I wash the whole thing to blend it a bit so these are the colours I use put a bit of Rhinox hide as a first one Doomball brown, then Skarg brown. After I've done that, I wash it with a bit of Agrax Earthshade. So what I wanted to do is get these two models up to this point, or at least one of them. So to start with, I'm going to put this contrast over this model. Now with the contrast, you can use this directly from the pot. I think you can also water it down to get a different effect. Maybe, um, 
you wanted it to be a bit thinner on the panels just go into the recesses but it's not really what I'm doing here while I do like how it goes into the recesses this is mainly as a um, as a a tint I'm not a colour expert or anything but I'm just going to call that a tint because it's changing the colour of the of the surface I do like how easy these contrast paints are to use. Now usually you just need one coat. It does a pretty good job. I think the the risk with using contrast if it's producing the sort of colour you want um, the risk is just like with using a wash um, once you start putting it on unless you've got sections of a model that are clearly separate um, once you start applying it you kind of need to do all the bits because where you've got two sections that connect um, the two bits of contrast will leave a um, I think the term is like a coffee stain effect or something it's really sort of a boundary between them it shows up as a thin line um, that sort of thing probably wouldn't matter for what I'm doing because I'm going to be painting all sorts of mess all over these anyway Um, but yeah certainly if you're doing panels or something you want them to be relatively neat then you wouldn't want to do that after all these are uh, these are orcs, so sometimes it doesn't really matter if you're not really that neat. They're a little bit messy anyway. I think if I did this again I probably wouldn't build the entire model I've noticed on these orcs 
they um they sort of hunch over. Yeah, they kind of um a bit stocky or something. So there's a lot of little details that just kind of get squished in the middle of the model. Um, it can be a bit tricky separating them out when you're painting. That's that simple. It's a uh, that's a model with contrast paint on it. So get some light on there. Very quick. If you wanted your models to be a sort of bronze um, and shaded and whatnot. You know, you could just leave it like that. Maybe give it a very light dry brush with something else to bring out some edges, but it could probably look pretty cool for some sort of effect. But now I'll let that one dry and I'll get to work on this one, doing some of the, um, some of the rust. So, I've actually got some paint left in my palette from the last one I did. And this is just a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and the uh, Doom Bull Brown. Could probably just put a full Rhinox Hide down on this, but uh, I don't know, this is all a bit of an experiment really, aside from an orc war boss I painted quite a while ago, these are all the first rusty models I've ever painted, I'm just giving it a go, you can see if you can see that, I'm um, I'm just sort of blotching it on, um, and I'm putting it into you know corners and things. So if you think about rust, it tends to form in corners. So where there's any edges of things, I blotch it around there. And these guys, the effect I'm going for is I want pretty heavy rusting. You know, I want I want it to look like all their all their stuff is just old and you know really worn. So I'm blotching a lot. And this, this step is very inaccurate. You can see some of the sort of, well, maybe you can see it, but just here I'm just sort of throwing it on all over the place. Um, because The next browns I use as I get progressively more orange, um, it's going to be more specific, or I guess, you know, into um, you know, further into those edges and things. 
So this is kind of the outer um, the outer side of all the, the rust. If you just left it like this it would look it would look pretty bad. thinking of um, painting up a, an entire army of these orcs with a sort of Nurgle theme have them covered in rust and, and grime as if they've been um, you know, fighting their way through horrible muck for a long time. to actually enjoy painting this rust, it's just sort of um, the style of painting I like not necessarily the sort I like to see I, um, I do like seeing the models of really good paint jobs non-metallic metals, things like that all the stuff I've never tried um, but this is the sort of this is the epitome of um, an approximation you know it doesn't have to be there's no very little precision involved and the effect, the effect improves at you know, the three foot rule, looking at your model a bit further away. So, um, yeah, sort of an impression. So this is now, I'm using um, just straight Doom Ball Brown putting in a bit further inside those areas I've just covered in the 50-50 mix and again I'm just sort of stippling very loosely it doesn't really matter if you get it outside that area too I guess it depends on how rusty you want it to look These are all very yeah, great kind of earthy, rusty colours. A bit like a West Australian sand. Just I, something I've noticed about um, you know, the Doom Bull Brown, well, all, through, all of these browns, 
um, they they tend to dry a bit darker than when you put them down. So you just need to give it a little bit of time before you sort of assess whether you like it or not. Not really sure what what I want to do about the orc skin yet. It's fine having this sort of green green sort of setup I've got at the moment, but if I want these guys to look like they've been uh, fighting through a diseased nightmare. Um, Should really look into options about uh, maybe decaying stuff or something. As usual, I've forgotten something. I um, I missed the uh, the steel cap boots. I've done that a few times on these guys. Actually, um, I'll just give it a go with this. I actually like putting on the um, the next colour, the Skarg Brown. It's a very orange brown. And um, when you sort of put it down, it, it sort of gives that feeling of, oh, what have I done? You know, it's sort of throwing this bright orange on my um, on my model but as you go along it kind of starts to come together um, and and the paint sort of like I said gets a bit darker as it dries and um, yeah as you sort of Get a fair bit of that on there, it really does the job. So I'm gonna get a bit of that now. There we go, just uh, see if this pops up. You can see this. You can see on the top here, I'll just put tiny dots in. Kind of want to stipple it so it's not not like a uniform line or anything. Yeah, you want it to look like it's or like rust that kind of happens um, you know, unevenly.
see here where I've got these little sort of shoulder hook spike things. I tend to put it in between those. So it, um, yeah, it looks like the sort of whatever's causing the rust, you know, water and so on, gets into the bits in between it and that's where the rust is the most severe. when I'm finished I'll, um, I'm going to put a wash over the whole thing so it blends some of these edges together because um, yeah, even though I'm sort of trying to be a bit careful not to go overboard with this sort of orange brown and trying to stipple it it still leaves a little bit of a, a boundary between the colours so a bit of um Bit of a wash or shade helps blur the boundary a bit, blend it together. But I won't do that until I've um, until I've put the sort of shiny edges on. Which I'll do next. Just remembered that one thing that helps with this is if you keep your brush fairly moist and have the paint a little bit thinner because well, not too thin like that but um, when you do that it, the, the paint flowing off your brush seeps into the gaps and stuff very easily it means um, yeah, it looks a lot like the rust sort of creeping into the crevices and things. heavy rusting you know to look like these things almost wouldn't function they're not so much um, yeah mechanically functional weapons and so on as they are just sort of chunks of rusted metal they used to bash with And now, I'll let that dry, and I'm going to put a bit of iron breaker on there. So at least my, um, my pot of iron breaker tends to be a little bit thicker 
and some of the other paints. So very much not the kind of paint you use straight out of a pot. Not that I do that very often. Definitely the metallics I find tend to get a bit thick over time. Um, so yeah, here I'm just going to go put a couple of edges on. Some of these um, claw bits. Particularly edges that are that would be used for cutting. And where the metal would um, scrape. But once I've got some of these down. I don't really want this model to look like it's got edge edge highlights. So instead of just putting hard edges on everything, I'm um, I sort of dab it so it looks a bit more like it's um, instead of an edge, it's more like damage. Again, it's just a little, um, a bit like putting the rust on, it's kind of tapping the model, stippling. Again, the sort of beauty of painting rusty orcs. If you make a mistake, um, you know, just wipe it off with your thumb. You know, even if it leaves some behind, it doesn't really doesn't matter much because it's a a rusty orc. Maybe just put a bit more of that, um, those edges onto parts where the model would sort of crash into things. So, you know, these claws, I don't feel like cutting things like vehicles, a bit like a a road safety sort of rescue jaws of life type thing um, and the sort of facing edge on that would smash into metal and stuff so the rust would be kind of it'll grind away in that process
and you can even put like even just put little metallic dashes and things onto the onto the panels to sort of represent scratches that have recently happened um, you know in the case of these sort of bullets or something hitting the hitting the panels which is a bit ironic considering the armor save that orcs have in the game but whatever could even be their own bullets Probably uh, enough on that one. Let's get a bit more here. There. Um, see if I can get close up of that. So. This is kind of the point where I'd put the, the wash on, but you can see how the, the different browns and stuff come together to give a bit of a rust effect over that bronze kind of base. So the bronze base is there to sort of give the impression that um, everything's rusted with a sort of least some rust and the layers of brown are just more rust on top so here we go Um, I think that will do.
so it's still a bit wet, but um, yeah, that's kind of where I'll leave it. Still got the rest of the model to paint, but uh, yeah, it's got that sort of extreme rust over the whole model. So if you like um, grimy looking rusty models, then that's one way to do it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, see you later.